This podcast of Central Indiana Today is brought to you by Figment 2 McDonald's. Stop by any of their stores in Avon, Brownsburg, Danville, Speedway, and 10th Street, next to Ben Davis High School, for great specials, including the two for two fifty and two for five dollars. They also have all day breakfast items, which now include biscuits and McGriddles. And coming soon to the Danville location, Wednesdays will be family night. Figment 2 McDonald's is a proud supporter of Central Indiana Today and WYRZ 98.9. Hello, this is Kevin Kersey of the Kevin Kersey Agency. The Kevin Kersey Insurance Agency, a member of the Farmers Insurance Group, can help you with your home, life, auto, or business needs. We are located at 701 North Green Street in Brownsburg, and our phone number is 317-286-3481. We can also be found on Facebook at the Kevin Kersey Agency or at our website, www.farmersagent.com forward slash kkersey. Indiana Family Dentistry is located at 505 North Green Street in Brownsburg. Dr. Will Hine practices general and cosmetic dentistry with services ranging from veneers and whitening to implants and complete smile restorations. Indiana Family Dentistry's phone number is 852-5999 and website is infamilydentistry.com. Indiana Family Dentistry is a proud supporter of Hendricks County and Community Radio. This is Donald James of Impact Youth Mentoring. Impact Youth is a not-for-profit mentoring organization providing mentoring services to the children of Hendricks County. We pair mentors ages 16 and older with youth in Hendricks County. Over the past five years, we have been able to impact over 120 children through our mentoring and tutoring programs. Information about becoming a mentor or finding a mentor for a child can be found at impactyouthmentoring.org or via email at impactyouth1010 at gmail.com. The UPS Store Brownsburg is located at 124 East Northfield Drive in Brownsburg. Their phone number is 858-1422. The UPS Store Brownsburg can handle your printing needs, including color, large format, and business cards. They also do blueprints, mailers, and invitations. Thanks to owner Tom Reese and all the folks at the UPS Store Brownsburg for supporting community radio in Hendricks County. The Kevin Kersey Agency presents Central Indiana Today on 98.9 WYRZ. Today's program is made possible by the Kevin Kersey Agency, 701 North Green Street in Brownsburg. And now here's your host, Rob Kendall. Welcome in to another edition of Central Indiana Today here on 98.9 WYRZ. I'm Rob Kendall. Thanks for joining us on the program today. We're going to speak with a guy that I have been a big fan of for a long time. His name is Jim Cornette. He's a former professional wrestling manager as well as television commentator. His career has spanned more than 35 years. He's worked for some of the... uh, most well-known wrestling institutions across the country, including the World Wrestling Federation as as well as World Championship Wrestling. And uh, one thing about Jim is got a lot of his early love for professional wrestling right here in the city of Indianapolis. Uh, He's from Louisville, Kentucky, and and, uh, drove up here, used to watch professional wrestling matches. And Jim was kind enough to sit down with us and give us a little bit of a behind-the-scenes view of what it was like to be one of the uh, the best-known Known wrestling figures throughout the uh, late 80s and on into the 90s and so let's talk about uh, some of the other things he's doing now he's got a great podcast out there still entertaining fans to this day so it's just a really really good conversation what I wanted to do for a long time was everything I thought it would be and I know you're really going to enjoy it so without uh, further delay here's our conversation with professional wrestling legend Jim Cornette Well, we have the privilege today of speaking with professional wrestling legend. He's been a manager, a commentator, and so much more. The one and only Jim Cornette. Jim, great to have you with us today. Now, legendary. You know what a legend is, don't you? What's that? That's a that's a big bunch of BS that gets even more BS every time it gets told over and over again. So, so Rob, you you are in the presence of of one of the most legendary uh, uh, legends of all time. Now, I'm curious, because when we were talking before we went on the air, I saw you in 1996, downtown Indianapolis. When you were doing things in the late 80s and into the 90s, did you think some 30 years later people would still be clamoring uh, for those days to hear your stories, to hear those experiences? 
Well, actually, no, because I was still thinking that people would still be clamoring for, for the stories that I love to hear over and over again, because the first time I went into Market Square Arena wasn't 1996. It was 1976, and I was 14 years old, and my mom drove me up from Louisville to see Dick the Bruiser against the Sheik. And I thought those were the stories that everybody would still want to hear about Bruiser and the Sheik. I didn't know anybody would want to hear my little, little puny stories. So uh, you mentioned Bruiser, and that was my dad's all-time favorite wrestler. I hear these great stories about his his uncle would sneak him up to, to, to Indianapolis to see the, the Bruiser at the old uh, Indianapolis Indian Stadium, wrestle the Sheik in the cage. Um, how did you get into wrestling? Believe it or not, Dick the Bruiser. Um, I, I Actually, I was like nine years old, maybe, and my mom told me one Sunday morning she'd been up late with a cold the night before, and she said, Jimmy? I saw wrestling on TV last night that looked just like the wrestling that I used to watch on TV when I came to Louisville in 1951. <laughs> this, was, <laughs> this was 1972 or whatever, by the way. And it, it was Dick the Bruiser's TV show on WTTV, Channel 4 out of Indianapolis, Bloomington. Uh, when Channel 3 here in Louisville went off the air, back when TV stations did such a thing, uh, you could get Channel 4. It wasn't great, but you could get it. And I got a big antenna shortly after this so I could get it better because I said, can I watch it next week, right? Can I stay up? It was like 1 in the morning. She said, okay. So I stayed up and watched it. There was Dick the Bruiser and Bobby Heenan and the Blackjacks and Cowboy Bob Ellis and Baron Von Raschke. And and I just went wild over it. And that started my love affair with wrestling. And I found out that, that uh, shortly after looking at the TV listings that uh, – there was wrestling on here in Louisville. It was it was Jerry Jarrett's show from Memphis. He had just put it on the, like the year before and and started running wrestling at Louisville Gardens. So eventually I was able to talk her into driving me all the way downtown as a little kid to, to see the matches at the gardens on Tuesday nights. And and it just it went from there. <laughs> the rest is guest, history, as they say. Again, our guest is uh, legendary professional wrestling manager, commentator Jim Cornette. When I was a kid and I would go or I would watch it on TV, I didn't want to be a wrestler. I wanted to be a mixture of three people, Bobby Heenan, you, and Brother Love. I mean, I wanted to be – Oh, my God, that, that would be I, – I think that, that particular if, – if you were to meld those three people, that particular sexual act is even illegal in Denmark. <laughs> I, but you guys were so great at stirring emotion from people. Who did you want to be? Did you want to be a manager? Did you want to be a wrestler? Well, actually, I, I never thought it was – when I was a kid, I didn't think it was going to be possible for either. I, I settled into my teenage you know, job as, as uh, Jimmy Olsen, boy ringside photographer and fill-in ring announcer and part-time merchandise table you know, salesman and general all-around gopher, and I thought that would be the end of it. But after I'd done that for the time I was like 14 until finally I'd turned 20, and and one day Jerry Jarrett called me in and at, at Channel 5 in Memphis. I was shooting the, the TV matches for Bill After's Pro Wrestling Illustrated, and he said, have you ever thought about being a manager? And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I actually like to do this. And, and, and once again, as they say, the rest is history. But I... I, I would have loved to have been a manager, but I, or a wrestler rather, but I would also have loved to, you know, physically been able to do that, which probably wasn't going to happen. And I think the manager role fit best because one thing I was able to do was was piss people off pretty well, uh, even without trying sometimes. Wrestling a lot of times is an amped up version. The character is an amped up version of who you are as a person. Was that you? Was Jim Cornette's character an amped up version of you, or is it something different? Oh God! It, it, at first, it was me trying to imitate all the the people who did what I was supposed to be doing well. <laughs> <laughs> I would try to, you know, I'd take a little Bobby Heenan and take a little Jimmy Hart and take a little Jerry Lawler and take a little of everybody that I'd ever watched and you know and and admired. And then it started to become me because you know when you first start out in in wrestling. You can't really be yourself, just your plain, ordinary self, you know, when you're sitting around the couch, at, you know, on Saturday afternoon watching TV, because that's kind of boring. But you, there has to be something in you that you can bring out that's, that's entertaining in some way, either that makes people like you or makes people dislike you. And fortunately, I was blessed with a lot of, of the attributes of the latter. So gradually it became me with all those other people thrown in, but at first I, I didn't really have anything in the me category to, to throw out there. 
Well, before we go any further, we want to talk a little bit about what you're doing now. You have a fabulous podcast. You talk to hundreds of thousands of people each week. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing now. Well, I'm, I've kind of been lucky because um, since the wrestling business, as we used to know it, is, is, is <laughs> let's say it's ailing. Uh, it's changed a lot. It's kind of, uh, I have a lot of people come up to me at comic book conventions or places up here and, and say, boy, we used to love wrestling. We don't watch it anymore. It's all soap opera. It's all talk. It's no action. So I got out of the wrestling business and into the Jim Cornette business. And now either through my website, jimcornette.com, uh, the books I write on, on uh, classic wrestling, the videos, uh, the, 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 you know, the T-shirts, uh, the podcast, the Jim Cornette Experience, is weekly on MLWRadio.com. You can still go to JimCornette.com and find a link for it. And it's blown up in the last three years. You know, I always say, come for the wrestling, stay for the politics. We talk a little bit about everything. <laughs> and people have found it uh, quite humorous. We have our little cast of uh, characters, sort of like an updated Allen's Alley. Boy, I'm really good. And that's an old radio reference for all of you people who were around when Marconi invented this stuff. Um and the the podcast that it reaches, as you said, uh, several hundred thousand people, uh, you know, uh, and and the cult of Cornette is growing. So I do the podcast. I travel in the spring, summer, and fall to wrestling legend fan fests and comic book conventions. I'm an old comic book collector and do a little dealing on the side. Um, and pretty much everything at jimcornette.com, my, my magazine columns on classic wrestling and wrestling history, um, you know, it, it's 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 all there. I, I stay busy. It keeps me off the streets, Rob. Like, <laughs> well, you know, as Jim Ross says, his his daddy used to say, "Nothing good happens on the street after midnight." Let's get our guest is the legendary uh, Jim Cornette. So you do all these you mentioned the the, the uh, comic book conventions and, and the different things. You do a ton of guest appearances. People actually pay you to go and and at their their stores and things like that. Does that ever get old? You have to be nice to people all the time. Does that ever get old? Oh, well, you know, I said one time last year at the uh, annual Charlotte Wrestling Legends Fan Fest and reunion, I said, boy, being cheerful is a lot of work. Um, but no. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's great. I, I, I sometimes I get tired of the trips. That's why I don't travel nearly as much as I used to. I like to stay home in my old age. But I never get tired of talking to wrestling fans that love wrestling and, and have good memories and, and you know, are excited to see you and meet you when, like you when they, you saw me 20 years ago. And now we're, we're having this phone conversation just like, just like it's almost like I'm a normal human and you're worthy of speaking to me. We're on the same level here, Rob. It, so that's, that's that's the fun part of it. The travel and the hotels, I, I tend to get tired of real quick. Well, it, it's, it's interesting because my friends found out I was going to interview not my radio colleagues, but just friends. I said, ask him this, ask him this. I said, I'm not doing Chris Farley fanboy with this guy. I'm not <laughs> doing it. But, but do you ever get tired of people coming up going, remember that one time when you were with Yoko Zuna? Remember that one time you were with this guy? Did, did that ever get old? No, well, it, it, it doesn't accept every once in a while, and I mentioned this on my show this past week, Every once in a while, I'll meet someone that will come up and you'll and they'll have a fully formed memory. They'll say, "Remember when you managed so and so, and you were at this arena, and this happened in the match? I was there, and then afterwards, my sister and I took you to Arby's for a sandwich, and just this fully formed, detailed memory." And the problem is, I never managed that person. I never appeared in that arena. That match never happened. I never went to Arby's with these people. But I, but I can't say. I can't call them on it, right? Because it would it would crush them. It would pop their bubble. They remember this happening. So yeah, I remember that. What the heck? Yeah, how how long's it been? <laughs> you know, you you have to. One of the things you do on your podcast, and and I love it. I love your frankness on things. If you do talk politics, it's great because it's different than just. Hey, Goldberg Russell, uh, Brock Lesnar, Survivor Series. You guys go into the world around you, and, and you have a very uh, direct opinion on a guy that I had an opportunity to interview, which is is Trump. And I'm curious, because Trump was so involved in wrestling, why why do you have such an issue with Trump? Um, well, <laughs> because just because Adolf Hitler might have liked puppies doesn't mean he still wasn't Adolf Hitler. <laughs> Um, you know, I just I, I got kind of interested or involved, shall we say, in in politics when when George W. Bush cost me three hundred grand in, in two thousand and eight, 
And then I was like, oh, my God, wait a minute, what's going on here? I need to pay attention to these things. So were, 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 you, were you pretty non-political before that? Is that kind of when you got interested? It really, yes, because I, I had been in wrestling so long. I had been traveling so much. I was lived in that bubble where we're always producing a new TV show the next week or a new big event or a pay-per-view or running a school down here in Louisville with Ohio Valley Wrestling or whatever it may be. I didn't pay attention to anything in the world until all of a sudden – my money's evaporating, and, and stuff's going south, and I'd like to know why, and, and I start paying attention, and I realize, well, George W. Bush is a blithering buffoon, and the Republicans have screwed up our entire country, and they've crashed the global economic system. They've got us into wars with the wrong people. They've cost us all a fortune in, in, in lives and blood and treasure, et cetera. And, and then all of a sudden, Barack Obama... <laughs> lights up the screen, here's a rational, intelligent, dignified, reasonable man, happens to be the smartest guy in the room, has a lot of good ideas for things he wants to do for people, get us out of the mess, save the auto industry, find Bin Laden, all the things he does. So, yeah, I want that guy. When you stand up Barack Obama next to George W. Bush, it looks almost like you're comparing Albert Einstein with Howie the Mailroom Guy. So, so let me ask so, you this. And, and then I, I got astonished that, uh, that as many people in this country still believe in this crackpot Republican ideology as they do. And, you know, they want, to, they want to uphold everybody's rights except for your rights if you're gay or lesbian or a minority or you want to have an abortion. or you, any, you got the right to go to church and have a gun with the Republicans. The Democrats give you everything else. But, so anyway, that's that's how it got started, and now I'd like to call attention to, and with Trump, to answer your question, yes, he was involved in wrestling. That's another reason I don't want him anywhere near the White House. <laughs> I know these people, they, 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 almost 50%, not quite, because after all, Hillary won the election. It's just the Electoral College that keeps the hillbillies, you know, in, in play. He, he, almost 50% of the country fell for a wrestling promo. That's, all, that's what he was doing. He was going out there and saying what people who would support Donald Trump want to hear. <laughs> so take me through the wrestling promo. You, you said it on your podcast. <laughs> I know that, was, that was fascinating. You believe that, that Trump almost did like a wrestling character running for president. Oh, well, he did because, I mean, when you, when you have a special set of rules for Donald Trump, every other politician, anything that Trump said would have automatically disqualified them from life. Right? They'll never be spoken to again. But because Trump is a, a TV character, basically a reality TV show guy, they were willing to let him say anything, no matter how, you know, crazy or insane it was, and 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 nothing happened. And they and it's there's so many people who protest voted for this idiot. There's like we don't want him we want him because he's not a politician. Yeah, that, to try that line of thinking if you're applying for heart surgery. I'd like that guy, the valet Parker. He doesn't have anything to do with these heart surgeons in this hospital. He doesn't know how this stuff works. He doesn't know any of their names. He doesn't know anything about this, this line of work. I'd like him to do my heart surgery because he's not going to have preconceived notions about how my heart ought to be operated on. What in the world were they thinking? So... There's a history in this country on both sides of the political aisle when celebrities, entertainers have a political opinion. There is some backlash from fans that disagree with them. When, have you had any backlash from being outspoken politically? Oh, a bunch of people on Twitter just hate me. What? They, they, oh, they just hate Why? You idiot, stick to wrestling. You're a liberal. Yes, yes, I am. It's also called being sane, rational, <laughs> reasonable, intelligent. <laughs> Yeah, I don't care. As a matter of fact, I I, I said this on my show a few weeks ago because I've I've been really stiff on the on every time that that there's another mass shooting at a school and a bunch of little grade school kids get get blown up by some nut with an automatic assault rifle and the Republicans refuse to do anything because uh, because they're you know beholden and paid for by the NRA. Uh, I talk about it and everybody goes nuts, but I don't care because. My father would be ashamed of me if, if I – just to sell a few extra gimmicks, some more merchandise, that I didn't say what I really thought about something, especially if it was important and not just wrestling. 
I'm, I'm amazed at the people that hold people's political beliefs against them if they have a talent. I met Bruce Springsteen yesterday. It was something I wanted to do, to do for a long time. I don't necessarily agree with all of his political leanings, but he's so immensely talented and, and was such an inspiration to me. Are you surprised at people that hold people in the land of the free, hold people's political beliefs against them? Uh, no, because I do the same thing. <laughs> 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 no, I'm, I'm, you know, here's the thing. People can believe what they want to believe. I'm also a militant atheist. Not only am I an atheist, but it makes me angry that people in this day and age still believe in this because it infringes on the rights and privileges of other people. Um, I don't want people in, in the United States government making public policy based on Bronze Age myths um, about, you know, 2,000 years ago. Uh, I want it based on fact and science and reason. Uh, so I, I and and that's why I get really mad at at people who who don't take the time to investigate a Donald Trump and see that he is a fraudulent con man, a pathological liar, a megalomaniac, a, 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 and you know a, whatever the case, whatever he is. If you can't bother to be bothered to take the time to do the research on who you're voting to run the country, then you shouldn't be voting. And anybody who did just the barest little research could see what Donald Trump really is. Anybody, I, my mailman, I actually had to send my mailman off because he got in a, a, a conversation with me that he uh, uh, instigated, <laughs> basically saying that Barack Obama was a Muslim. Okay, <laughs> you're disqualified, pal. You shouldn't be allowed to vote if you're so stupid. But you still think Barack Obama has been president of the United States for eight years. Bill Clinton got a blowjob in the closet at the Oval Office at the White House. We couldn't keep that secret. But you can keep secret for eight years the first black president is a Muslim. And the only people that reported are these idiot Breitbart, you know, uh, uh, people. It, it's, it's just it's ludicrous. So I hold people's beliefs against them when they don't bother to investigate and see what's really going on. Again, our guest is the legendary Jim Cornette. Uh, Jim, again, tell us as we go through, people maybe just tuning in, where can they find you? Now, you're doing an awesome podcast. You're doing a ton of other stuff. Where can they find you now? Well, they, 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 they thought they tuned in to meet the press, actually, is what they thought <laughs> until now. JimCornette.com is the place to go to find everything, including the information on the Jim Cornette Experience, my wonderful, humble little podcast, as well as all of my books and videos and all the holiday merchandise at Cornette's Collectibles for the wrestling fan and the family, jimcornette.com. Uh, okay, so one final political question. Because, like I said, I, I love listening to the podcast. You go back and forth. You do wrestling. You do politics. You do life. You do things that are going on around. Have you ever considered running for office? I mean, you're a big name in Kentucky. Well, <laughs> so is fried chicken. But uh, I wouldn't vote for fried chicken for governor either. No. <laughs> because here's another thing. I feel that people should be smart enough to know what they can do and what they can't do and what they don't want to do. And I can't and wouldn't want to uh, uh, put up with running for office or serving in political office because I know I'm not qualified. I believe I'm qualified to judge the contenders based on their merits and arrive at a conclusion uh, to uh, who to vote for, but not to actually get people to vote for me. No, I know a, a, a smart man knows his limitations. And I wish that Donald Trump and that turtle-faced idiot Mitch McConnell that we got stuck with down here for the past 30 years and all these other egg whites in, 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 in the Senate that have blocked everything that, that the Obama administration has tried to do for eight years or more good things might have happened if not for them. I wish that they knew what I know. Okay, so take us through – let's get back to wrestling for a little bit. Do you miss being involved in the day-to-day -day operations, obviously – after leaving WWE, you know, you ran through a wrestling school and affiliated with them. You did TNA. Do you miss being on television? Do you miss the day-to-day -day stuff? It, it, it's, it's sort of like the old adage of I like to bang my head against the wall repeatedly because it feels so good when I stop. <laughs> uh, but, no, I enjoyed everything I did in wrestling, but, I, I, like I said, I don't enjoy traveling anymore. I don't I, – I don't have to keep track of 40 or 50, you know, wild Indian wrestlers running around everywhere and, and misbehaving, and it's like herding cats. Um, I just have to be responsible for me. So I, I enjoy that at this point in my life. I like to stay home with the puppy, Harley Quinn, and the queen of Castle Cornette, the lovely Stacy, and, and, uh, and, and do my own thing now. I've taken care of, of enough people for long enough. 
Do you mentioned your mailman, and that's so. This is why I love this show because I get to hear stories like that that you got into a fight with your mailman about politics, which to me is just hilarious and great. Um, do like your neighbors know who you are? Like people around your your area where they live, do, you, do they know that, uh, that that you're Jim Cornette? Well, luckily, I'm I'm still. Although the city is finding me, they're building developments all around me. But I'm still kind of out in the woods, and the people that live on my street have been here for years and years. And, and uh, so they, they sometimes knew who I was before I was who I was. So it's not that big of a deal. I don't have I don't have people showing up at the front gates of, you know, next to the moat, knocking, going, can we take the tour? That's, uh, thankfully, that, that's not happened. But, but some people, in, you know, around town or around the, the neighborhood, they, they know who I am. But they, they give me plenty of space for some reason. I don't know why. Now... I try to do this with every person, the famous person or person that's been in the spotlight, whether it's through elected office or, or television, such as yourself. Um, you've got to have a really supporting cast around you. I know you mentioned your wife all the time. You mention her a lot on your, your podcast. You've got to have some really supportive people around you because you're gone so much. And Just talk a little bit about that, what family life has been like for you. Oh, God. Well, my, my family is very small. Um, it, it's down practically to me. Um, no, I because I, I, my my father is my mother was my father's second marriage. His first wife was killed in in a car wreck, and so he was older and he passed away back in in the late sixties. And and most of his side of the family was older and and have gone away. So basically, I'm down to a a couple of cousins, a cousin in law, the puppy and the wife, and the in laws. I got the the family on the other side of this. But uh, fortunately, none of them are around really close. Because you know the old saying, you know, family and garbage, they both stink after four four or five days. <laughs> so I try to spend a lot of time at, at, at home in the peaceful and the quiet and et cetera. Just to pull pull the drawbridge up. Nobody can get across the moat. It's it's beautiful. It's castle in the wintertime. Now you mentioned comic books and that was actually something I was gonna to talk to you about, that you are a somewhat avid comic book collector. Tell us about that. Uh, actually, I got into comic books even before I got into wrestling. I was like six or seven years old, and from my cousins that I just mentioned, I got a big box of secondhand Marvel comics and just fell in love with Fantastic Four, Spider Man, and the Avengers, and Hulk, and and the whole nine yards. And by the time that uh, I was in my late teens, when I when I quit collecting because I just I've got one of the world's largest pro wrestling memorabilia collections, and I was on the road starting with you know with wrestling at that point and. Something just had to give, but I saved my comic book collection, and over the past few years, uh, I've gotten into uh, enjoying myself dickering and selling, and there's a few things that um, that I'll probably keep with me always, but when I ended up with 10,000 comics and all of them were Silver Age, <laughs> including complete runs of every Marvel superhero title, I said, well, you know, that's that's a lot of money to be tied up in these you know sixty boxes of comic books. So maybe it's time I, I move some things around. Uh, but I just you know uh, I it, comic books to me and and wrestling are kind of similar in that they're larger than life characters that uh, that that do things in a superhero fashion. It's just one's live and one's on the printed page. Now you mentioned your your wrestling memorabilia collection. You're doing all the segways for me, which is great. Um, I'm a big se- I'm a great segway guy. You ought to see the one I'm riding around the castle here now. The segway, it's amazing. <laughs> so, like when the Cubs won the World Series, Anthony Rizzo, the first baseman for the Cubs, he took the ball, put it in his pocket, and basically said, "I've got four million bucks cash in my back pocket now." Um, did you like hoard stuff from famous wrestlers, thinking, "Hey, you know, this is going to be really valuable someday"? How did you go about? assembling your your collection god i've I've always been a hoarder slash collector um and i've got ocd so at least it's not like i don't have giant garbage bags piled up in the corner of the house everything's organized but i've just i'm i've always liked old memorabilia and and antiques and it doesn't just have to be related to comics or wrestling I, i have uh a nice collection of, of of first edition tarzan books um, I, I, you know, my family antiques that I've, uh, that I've saved and also collected a few in my travels. And I like old paper, you know, whether it be movie posters or, or old movie magazines from the thirties and just anything vintage. I love stuff like that. So the whole house, every room in the house has a different theme and every room in the house is decorated with something. And to answer your original question, 
I never really hoarded stuff from the guys because it was like, you know, you, you went to the locker room with, you know, 18 or 20 of your friends every night and, and went out and put on a show. So it wasn't until afterwards I was like, man, I should have got that or I should have got this. You know? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't want to be too much of a fanboy in the locker room, but I've, I've tried to go back and make up for it afterwards and getting a few things signed for my wall from people that I really, you know, enjoyed working with or respected. But now, it keeps I, me I, busy. The fourth layer shows only just a little bit over 30 minutes, so uh, we're going to have to have you back again. And so I'm saving some good questions for next time, hoping you've had fun and will want to come back again. Uh, oh, well, well, Rob, especially as soon as your check clears, I'd be happy. <laughs> to, no, no I, would, I would love to do the show anytime. I've, I, you know, like I said, Indianapolis holds a lot of great memories for me, not only when I was able to appear there uh, years ago with the WWF, but actually... Yeah, like I said, when I you know used to go to the matches at the Expo Center or Market Square Arena, and you know and watch those guys, uh, Indianapolis. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm I'm a David Letterman fan, not from the fact that he was one of the funniest guys on television, but from the fact that I used to watch him on Channel 13 do the weather. Yeah, <laughs> that's a long time ago. Yeah. So Indianapolis is a, it's a cool place for me, babe. I would love to come back. Oh, that's a, well. We'd love to actually have you back sometimes, and we'd roll up a red carpet here for you at the WIRZ studios. I mean, it'd almost be as nice as Castle Fournette. Well, uh, yeah, but I understand the last time at your radio station, somebody unrolled a carpet. There was a dead hooker rolled up in it. So, <laughs> okay. So, two questions we, we, while we still got you here. One is a uh, very famous wrestler who I know you're very opinionated on from uh, the Indianapolis area. He has a guy named Jim Helwig, the ultimate warrior, and I'd just be curious to get the, get your thoughts on one of Indiana's more famous uh, professional wrestlers. Well, now, see, you had to, and Bob, I didn't know he was from Indiana. Yeah, right up the road from us. I, I did not know that because, you know, he lived in Arizona for so long. When he, got, he he moved out to Arizona where he could, he could, he could be away from people, I think. Um, well, yeah, he actually grew up in Crawfordville, went to uh, Western Boone High School and Indiana State College for years. So, yeah, one of our uh, one of our more famous, little known, but more famous uh, citizens. I well, you're going to hate this then because I thought he was a prick. So, oh, I uh, <laughs> And I'm, I know you're not supposed to speak ill of the dead, but I also I think it's phony of people that when they 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 always talk about how bad they dislike this guy or that guy, and then he dies, and all of a sudden he was a great guy. No, he, he was he was he was what he was. He was uh, he said a lot of hateful things about people in his time. He was very right wing. He was very anti gay. He broke Bobby Heenan's neck, and Bobby was he is a good friend of mine, and he is the greatest manager of all time. And he broke Bobby's neck and didn't even apologize. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, he, he was a lousy wrestler. It was mass hypnosis on the part of Vince McMahon that got him over because of his body for a couple of years. And then nostalgia didn't kick in that well for him until like 20 years after the fact. And, and people liked him when he came back and did the hall of fame. And then he had the good timing to die right afterwards because people would have been back to not liking him about three weeks later. Yeah, I had a chance to talk to the Ultimate Warrior a couple times about doing a media project. So when you come up to WIRZ, I don't want to share it on the air, but you'll you'll really enjoy that uh, enjoy that story. Did you uh, understand anything that was coming out of his mouth? I have told people this, and I've said this many times on, on the air. What I have revealed, uh, it was like talking to the character. He was literally I pictured him in the face paint and the ring attire and everything else. Ultimate Warrior was sitting there talking to me. It was fascinating. It was uh, it was very different. Um, so that, that leads me to, I guess, what I say. My final question is: You dealt with guys like the Ultimate Warrior as Jim Helwig. You dealt with them behind the scenes, Hulk Hogan as Terry Bollea. When you would go into these meetings and stuff, was it hard sometimes to put down that guard? To say, look, we got business to do here. We've got things we've got to accomplish. You're not Hulk Hogan here. You're Terry Bollea. You're not Ultimate Warrior here. You're, you're Jim Helwig. Did you kind of have to be the muscle in those meetings? Well, <laughs> and actually, I fortunately did not have to have very many meetings with Warrior or Hogan. Uh, because I, they were already gone from the WWF by the time that I got there. I did have meetings with people of equal stature on the other side of the fence, WCW, or et cetera, or guys that came later, like Steve Austin and The Rock. But to be quite honest, um, guys like Ric Flair, Steve Austin, The Rock, The Undertaker, those guys were probably closer to their gimmick than the, in real life than Warrior or Hogan were in theirs, except they knew it was a business and they were professionals. And I truthfully didn't have any – it's always usually 
the middle guy on the card that thinks he should be in the main event that's the hardest one to deal with instead of these big stars because usually they're they're there but for a reason they know what they're doing if they give you something it's going to be gold if they want to do something their way chances are their way might be right uh but but you know fortunately i didn't have to deal with too many uh definitely there was warrior the case by himself there's never anybody that believed that he was the ultimate warrior more than the ultimate warrior. So, fortunately, uh, there there have been people that were tough to deal with in wrestling, but generally it's people that just were scared for their spot because they knew somebody else was better. And, Jim, let us, again, know where we can hear the podcast. you got all these things going on that are so great. Let, let us know about that. Well, at the risk of offending people who have hung with us since the start, I'll say it one more time. <laughs> Go to jimcornett.com for everything. Uh, a link to the Jim Cornette Experience podcast, and we urge you to join the cult of Cornette, and also for books and videos and merchandise on classic wrestling and myself and bios and pictures, jimcornette.com. You can do everything that way and, and join the cult. Jim, you've been such a great guest. It's something I've wanted to do for so long. Your podcast is phenomenal. The, the commentary you do is so great. So thank you for uh, for doing this, and we'd love to have you on again real soon. Rob, thank you for having me. I've enjoyed being had, and I would I would love to do it again sometime. That was the one and only professional wrestling legend Jim Coronet, and uh, thanks very much to him for taking a few moments to tell us a little bit about his thoughts, not just on his amazing career, but we got into the political spectrum and a whole bunch more. Hope you learned a lot today. I know I did. Hey, don't forget, if you missed any part of today's conversation, you can check out the podcast anytime you want. We're now available on SoundCloud and iTunes. Download the show right to your smartphone or tablet. You can go back and listen anytime you want. As always, the podcast presented by McDonald's. Until next time, I'm Rob Kendall. So have yourself a great evening. You've been listening to the Kevin Kersey Agency presents Central Indiana Today on 98.9 WYRZ. Made possible by the Kevin Kersey Agency, 701 North Green Street in Brownsburg. An archive of today's program can be heard at our website, wyrz.org. Tune in next time for another edition of the Kevin Kersey Agency presents Central Indiana Today with your host, Rob Kendall. This podcast of Central Indiana Today is brought to you by Figment 2 McDonald's. Stop by any of their stores in Avon, Brownsburg, Danville Speedway, and 10th Street next to Ben Davis High School for great specials, including the two for two fifty and two for five dollars. They also have all day breakfast items, which now include biscuits and McGriddles. And coming soon to the Danville location, Wednesdays will be family night. Figment 2 McDonald's is a proud supporter of Central Indiana Today and WYRZ 98.9. Hello, this is Kevin Kersey. Since 1968, our family has been helping customers with their insurance needs. We provide insurance coverage for life, home, auto, and recreational vehicles. We are located at 701 North Green Street in Brownsburg, and our phone number is 317-286-3481. The Kevin Kersey Agency can also be found on Facebook at The Kevin Kersey Agency or at our website, www.farmersagent.com forward slash kkersey. The Kevin Kersey Agency is a proud member of the Farmers Insurance Group. The UPS Store Brownsburg is located at 124 East Northfield Drive in Brownsburg. Their phone number is 858-1422. The UPS Store Brownsburg can handle your printing needs, including color, large format, and business cards. They also do blueprints, mailers, and invitations. Thanks to owner Tom Reese and all the folks at the UPS Store Brownsburg for supporting community radio in Hendricks County. This is Donald James of Impact Youth Mentoring. Impact Youth is a not-for-profit mentoring organization providing mentoring services to the children of Hendricks County. We pair mentors ages 16 and older with youth in Hendricks County. Over the past five years, we have been able to impact over 120 children through our mentoring and tutoring programs. Information about becoming a mentor or finding a mentor for a child can be found at impactyouthmentoring.org or via email at impactyouth1010 at gmail.com. Indiana Family Dentistry is located at 505 North Green Street in Brownsburg. Dr. Will Hine practices general and cosmetic dentistry with services ranging from veneers and whitening to implants and complete smile restorations. Indiana Family Dentistry's phone number is 852-5999 and website is infamilydentistry.com. Indiana Family Dentistry is a proud supporter of Hendricks County and Community Radio.